Thanks for watching today. This is Kinnear. This is a short video covering the Starfield May update currently available in beta on the Steam platform. I won't be playing their video for you or reading their blog post to you. I will post links in the description. I will be sharing my own ranking of the gameplay quest and features they've announced. I've sorted, searched, and categorized over 100 items, so let's take a look. Okay, these are the new features. They're on their blog post. They're on the list. I'm not going to read these to you. I've done a quick video on surface maps at this point in time, and I've done a quick video on the ship search, which is actually not a feature change. That's going to be a gameplay change later. The surface maps looks fan look fantastic. Go check out my video on those. I am currently working on a video on ship decorations, although that's a pretty straightforward idea. You can build things inside your ship. The most useful thing I found for a New Game Plus player is a bounty kiosk. I've used it already, out in space, collected a bounty, didn't need to go anyplace, turned around, walked to the back of my ship, and paid it off. The next one that really jumps out at me as huge is the gameplay options. I think most of us have played around with the gameplay difficulty setting. You can do that, especially if you're hunting for legendary items and things like that. But at this point in time, the beta includes a lot of very granular controls on the damage you can do, the effect of consumables, the carry capacity that you have, the vendor credits that are available when you sell things, all of this is going to allow us to tune this game to the way we like to play. If you want to play this like a survival game, where you probably have to eat and drink and make sure you've got all the consumables on hand in order to get through things, you can crank this up in that direction. If you want to go the other direction and you want this to be more like story mode, you can do that too. The only impact I can see is that in some settings, they decrease the amount of experience you're going to get from certain activities, or they increase the amount of experience you're going to get from certain activities. So it might take you longer to level up, but if you're in story mode, that probably isn't going to matter anyway. This is a feature that's going to be a lot of fun going forward. The next one is a huge update for Xbox players, I believe. I don't have an Xbox myself, but the fact that you can balance between performance and video quality and you can set a frame rate cap looks like it's going to be very useful to a lot of people. The last three that were on their feature list didn't jump out at me as being as urgent or important, but they are definitely nice to have, I think. I'm already using mods for my inventory view and container view, and I'll probably put out a different video on that. However, they have made some improvements to make it easier when you're playing the game using the vanilla interface to see what you're selling or which uh, item you're selling from or that you're looking through. I think all that stuff's going to be useful to people. It's just a small quality of life improvement. The ability to change traits and appearance when you're going into New Game Plus is a very big change. There's been no way for an existing character to change the three traits they select at the beginning of the game. Now, if you are willing to go into New Game Plus, you get to change those the moment you show up on the Starborn Guardian ship. Now, I do have a video that I took of that. I haven't published it at this point in time. It's not really the most exciting video because you arrive on the Starborn Guardian and the dialogue just opens up and you're right back where you were when you originally created your character. You can deselect the traits that you have currently and add new traits in place and you can change your appearance. Still a very nice feature. The last one is a feature that I'm, I'm not sure I thought I needed until I tried it. The dialogue camera option. As the game currently stands, when you enter into a dialogue with an NPC, you zoom in and you get kind of a face to face view of that NPC. The camera comes up very close to them and you go through the dialogue options there. And that's fine. And I've enjoyed that. And that's not a problem. However, you can turn that off. So now when you go up to an NPC and you start a dialogue, the camera stays right where it normally is. And you can still go through the dialogue. You're just not staring them in the face. And that's actually pretty nice. And I'm looking at some of the interactions I've had with NPCs that make that process feel somewhat more fluid. And I still think there are problems with some of the animations on some NPCs and some vendors and things like that. But some of that looks like it's gotten a little better as part of that process. Anyway, dialogue camera is a nice option. I'm glad to see it there and it's worth checking out. The second part of the update that I dug into are the quest updates. Now, the first thing I do is I take the entire list that they put out there and I sort them and then categorize them based on the quest line that they're in. I'm not sure why Bethesda doesn't do this in the first place, because what I want to know is what were they fixing and where were they paying attention? I'll list them here, although I'm not going to go through and read these to you, but I, I think it's worth looking at to say, okay, eight of them were in the main quest line. And now you can go through and look at them yourself and say, okay, well, are those important issues? Have they affected me? All of these fall into that category, in my opinion, which is if they've affected you, they may be important to you. 
Or you may look at them and say, well, yeah, I saw that, but it was trivial and it didn't really bother me anyway. And I didn't think about it after I saw it. So there are eight issues that were fixed within the main, main quest category. The one that absolutely jumped out at me because I've heard so many people mention it is the one that says, addressed an issue that could cause Vladimir to no longer give the player temple locations. Now, this has been an issue since the game was released, and there's, to some extent, it might be a user interface issue as well, but there's an indicator at one point in time that'll tell you you're missing a certain number of temples, and people frequently find themselves in a position where they're going to Vlad, not giving them temples, they're missing powers, and it's unclear whether this is a bug in one part of the game or another part of the game. So if they've done anything to improve this, it's a step in the right direction, and I'm pretty happy about it. The rest of them seem like they're pretty minor issues, but maybe they were a bigger issue to you. If so, leave a comment. Unlike the last patch, there's really only one quest update related to a companion quest, and that's for Barrett. And in this one, it's just an issue of where an NPC isn't where they're supposed to be. There's an issue with a potential crew member, Betty Hauser, and this talks about how she's not available in Jake's bar, but quite frankly, I've never seen her in Jake's bar because I always hire her out in Heinlein when I find her on her ship, the Lucky Lou. There are eight fixes to the Crimson Fleet quest line that I just completed a video series on. I actually don't remember seeing any of these. So that's good news that they're fixing these things. I'm sure that other people have seen them and it has affected them. It just hasn't affected me. Happy to see them fixed. I've also done the Ryujin quest line at least five times at this point in time, and I haven't seen these two, but again, good to know that they're fixing these problems. I haven't run into the issues that are present in the UC Vanguard fix list, although now I think I should try to lure the Terramorph back into the room with Hadrian just to see if this works. I never thought about doing that, but I don't know why I haven't thought about doing that. And the last four are side quests. And if the Razor Leaf disappears, that's probably a pretty urgent issue to you. Hasn't happened to me. And I haven't seen the issue in Startup Stop. The next area they covered, and where I think the two most important bug fixes are, is under gameplay updates. And the first one that jumped out at me is literally the shield bug problem. They describe it in a very generic and calm manner. Fixed an issue that could cause a ship's maximum shield capacity to appear decreased after loading a save with certain assigned crew. My personal savior. Okay, that's the shield bug. So I think this is, I believe this warrants some testing, but if they've fixed it, that's fantastic. This one has been lingering for a very long time. The second one that jumped out at us, and this is the one that came up starting in, in the March 19th update of 2024, fixed an issue that would prevent random ship encounters from landing on planets in some situations. And I've already done a short video on this one and ships are once again raining down from the skies when you land on moons. You can hear the sonic boom. I've had cases where two of them are showing up at the same location. Clearly, there's not a problem with our proximity to points of interest anymore. And I think there's more testing to be done in this one to make sure it, uh, it produces all the ships that we might want to get. But quite frankly, it looks just like it did before the March update, and that's fantastic. I'm not going to go through the rest of these. I did search and sort through these. I, you know, I look for anything that has the word ship in it, anything that has the word weapon in it, player, save, load, etc. a whole list there. Most of the rest of these seem like small issues to me just because I haven't run into them. I've never been trapped in Benjamin Bayou's penthouse. That sounds like a terrible thing. But they've got 45 different patches here, and that's fantastic that they continue to work through these, and hopefully this improves your gameplay as well. I will spend just a couple seconds here talking about outposts. I know not everybody builds outposts. I have from time to time. In New Game Plus, I'm not doing a lot of outpost building. I'll do just the minimal amount necessary in order to achieve my objectives in New Game Plus. However, they have come up with a couple of fixes here. The one that jumped out at me is actually the first one on the list, and looks like I've got my counters wrong there. There are 13, not 12, and there shouldn't be two number ones. But the first one on the list is the disconnect of water from greenhouses. If you've ever built an amp farm or you've ever, ever built a greenhouse in order to grow something, you know that if you change what you're producing there, you have to go back and reconnect your water sources. That's annoying, and I never understood why that was necessary. Evidently, it wasn't necessary, or they've decided it's not necessary any longer, so I'm very happy about this. The rest of these seem like the kind of problems in outposts that are nagging, and you probably run into it if you're heavy into outposts. Since I've backed away from outposts recently, probably because of some of the earlier problems they fixed. I haven't seen as many of these. Again, excellent that they are continuing to work this area. 
I am very curious about the last one on the list, which was fixing an issue with inter-system cargo ships not unloading resources to capacity. I remember when I was running inter-system cargo links and actually intra-system cargo links that items were not showing up in the way that they thought or I thought they would. They were stopping and starting, things like that. So hopefully this will be another step in the right direction toward getting all of the cargo links and resource movement within the outpost working the way that they should work for this to be as fun as it should be. And the last item that I looked at were the graphic settings. And I did the same thing here too, which is I, I looked for keywords like ship and, and I saw FSR mentioned several times and that's good because a lot of people rely on FSR. And I also look for the word rare to see if it's something that I really am not gonna pay that much attention to anyway. But most of these look like they're lighting, they're water effects, uh, artifacts and things like that. It's probably the kind of thing that if you are very detail oriented and you notice it, it, it might annoy you all the time. If you don't notice it, you've probably been blissfully unaware of any of these issues, and I hope that's the case. In any case, that's going to be a wrap for now. It's a big update. That's the way Bethesda describes it. Technically, it doesn't have as many items as the last update, but some of the things they've introduced are pretty big as far as changing gameplay. Thank you for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. If you would be so kind, please hit the like button, subscribe, and the notification bell. This is Kinnear, and I'm out of here.